Hey, it's time to talk about bugs again. Uh, today I wanted to talk about Nazar of Rigula and its eggs and why they're kind of strange. This comes from a paper that was just recently published in Arthropod Structure and Development, and it concerns the Corian morphology or the shell morphology of Nazar of Rigula eggs and how they get them to stick to surfaces. For those of you unfamiliar with this species, this is Nazar of Rigula or the Southern Green Stink Bug. It's a pretty universal pest uh, found all over the world. It's originally from Ethiopia, but now you can basically find it anywhere. And if you go out eh, in most places in the United States, just with a net in an open field, you will probably find this guy or some of its uh, babies. They come in lots of different colors, although green is the most common, but you can find them in all sorts of color morphs, uh, which can make them more difficult to identify if you're not familiar with them. But they do have some kind of distinctive features in that there are no spikes on the scutum, and the scutellum is usually uh, marked with these three white dots. Uh, but other than that, they can come in all sorts of uh, various colors, and their offspring tend to be extremely colorful as well. So of interest in this research article is specifically the eggs of Nazar Virgila, which tend to be laid on the underside of leaves, and specifically, how do they stick to each other? How do they stick to the leaf? Um, and how do how are they overall shaped? In this image here, you can see a parasitoid wasp bothering these eggs. It's uh, laying its own eggs inside these eggs. But this is pretty typical for stink bugs in that it lays the... Uh, stink bugs tend to lay these barrel-shaped eggs, and they tend to lay them in these big masses. But what's strange about Nazar of Rigula is that they do lay these eggs on all sorts of surfaces, but unlike other insects, Nazar of Rigula doesn't have a uh, glue gland. So in other insects, these glands are usually called collateral glands, and they lay on the side of the female reproductive system, and they produce a bunch of different substances, but in this case, they produce a glue that the female secretes onto the egg as it's laid or onto the surface that the egg will be laid on, and then she sticks the egg to that, and it prevents the egg from washing off or being moved or anything like that. Nazar of Rigula doesn't have these glands, so where is the glue coming from? How does the female get it to stick to a surface or to stick to each other in these uh, hexagonal shapes? So to solve this, the researchers dissected apart uh, a bunch of Nazar of Rigula females, took out their ovaries, and examine them under high magnification using various methods. So light, transmission electron microscopy, scanning electron microscopy, and this is what they found. So here, this side here, these are the ovaries of, of a Nazar of Rigula female. And within each of these strands, each, each of these strands is an ovarial. And as the eggs move down this way, they become more mature. The chorion or the shell is established. Um, until they get to the lateral oviducts, which uh, enters into the spermatheca down here where they become fertilized and then they are laid. Generally speaking, the collateral glands, if there was a glue gland, would be kind of inserting here and, so, and cover the eggs with a, a secretion of some sort of adhesive material. Over on this side, you can kind of see it more up close. You have up here the dromerium. This is uh, where the eggs start, it's where you have nurse cells and where the egg cells start their growth. And as they move down into the vitellarium, this is where vitellogenesis occurs here the, with this feed. This is where like the yolk is added to the egg. And going down this uh, ovarial here, you have nurse cells and you have something called follicle cell cells, which are what the mother adds to the exterior of the egg. The follicle cells are generally responsible for creating the chorion. They are what secretes the proteins to form the shell of the egg. But in this case, what the researchers found is not only are they uh, secreting the chorion, they're also what is responsible for making this glue. So these follicle cells around the eggs are what are secreting this glue. And you can see here, uh, they took an egg out of the ovarial and this uh, gelatinous ooze around the egg that's sticking there is the actual glue that is used to stick the egg onto the surface. They looked at these eggs under light microscopy uh, with some stain, and what you see here is the follicle cell, and the chorion is here, and this central layer is where the glue is secreted. 
So again, you have here that you have the follicle cell here, you have the egg chorion or shell here, and this blue stuff is the glue. And you can see it's a very, very consistent layer around the egg. So this, this internal void is the egg here. So this is the egg inside here going all the way around. And you have the follicle cells on the outside uh, and the glue all around. So as they were examining these eggs, they also noticed some interesting sculptural elements to the egg chorion. And this is all uh, looked at under scanning electron microscopy. This is the top of these barrel shaped eggs. So if we come here and look, this surface here is what we're looking at. So this is the uh, you know, anterior surface of the eggs. So this is the anterior surface of the eggs. And you can see that there's quite a bit of sculpture on this egg. And there are these little uh, pillars, these little mushroom bodies, what looks like coming off this off the surface of these eggs. So you increase the magnification and you can see more uh, sort of porous uh, mound structures. This rough patch here, this is the glue uh, that holds one egg into uh, next to the other. So you can see the glue in this area here. This is the glue holding the eggs together. But if you zoom in even farther with a scanning electron microscopy, you see these little uh, mushroom structures or these club structures sticking out. And these are aeromicropiles. So one of the things that no one really considers uh, is that eggs have a creature inside them and those creatures have to breathe. They still need oxygen. And these aeromicropiles are how oxygen gets in and out. It's how water gets in and out. Uh, sometimes with the micropiles, this is how sperm gets in and out. But generally the sperm micropile is just a little hole uh, in this case, you have these very, very elaborate club bodies uh, with an opening, and this is what allows the respiration to occur. Air goes in and out through this passage. You can get uh, humidity goes in and out, and this is how the egg actually controls uh, the respiration and humidity of the organism inside. But more interestingly, what they found is that th these little... Uh, club bodies that form this ring around the operculum. The operculum is a kind of the cap. It's a hinged cap on the egg. When the insect hatches, it, this operculum flips up and they just crawl at the top. So it's kind of like the barrel lid. These little club bodies arranged around the operculum actually act as a water repellent and it makes the top ring of the operculum unwettable. So this prevents drowning functionally it prevents water or any other liquid from completely covering the egg and it would which would smother the uh, organism inside so you can see here this is where they added a polyalcohol this here is the polyalcohol drop that's on the egg and the club structures along the operculum these air micropiles force the liquid off it doesn't matter uh if the entire egg is otherwise wet the water and or the alcohol or any sort of polar liquid cannot sit on top of these aeromicropiles uh, because of their physical structure and physical properties. It's constantly pushing the water off. You can see here with these eggs all st stuck to each other, the glue is in between the area. You can see the rings of all the aeromicropiles. All of them working together will kind of shunt the water off of the top of the eggs so that they can continue to breathe. And if you tip them up, you can see that secreted glue on the bottom of the eggs. This is what holds uh, the eggs on the surface of the leaf. So insects are complicated, even at uh, very, very high magnification, but that's all I wanted to talk about today. I will link this article if you are interested in reading it. It's only about 10 pages and they have some really cool images. I'll link that in the description and I'll talk to you guys later.